A hero saves an entire town from disaster, a crazy comic coincidence, and a horrifying tale of survival. Are any of these tales rooted in reality? Or are they devised from our imaginations? It's time to test your ability to decide between fact or fiction. The line that divides the factual from the unreal has long since blurred. The tales we once thought fantastical now implanted as true. To decipher verity from the imagined, you must break from the ordinary and consider a universe where the outlandish prevails. Can you expand your mind to see beyond our perceived reality? Can you decide what's fact or fiction? When you think of dangerous jobs, railway engineering probably doesn't top your list, but maybe it should, as our first tale of tonight might prove. What started out as a regular day for Diego Gomez ended in an act of bravery that would go down in history. In November of 1907, 25-year-old Diego went to work as a railroad brakeman in the small town of Mazunte in Mexico. He'd been working this job since he was 17, and eight years later, he still enjoyed his work on the rails. He was good at it too, and had been promoted several times during his career. Diego had always worked the same route, running east from Mazunte, and on that morning his train happened to be carrying dynamite. The train was in town, and Diego was resting before getting ready to start the day's journey. It was then that he noticed some hay on top of the roof of a car containing dynamite had caught fire. At first, Diego ran over to try to put out the small fire, but he soon realized that the sparks were coming from the train's firebox and that it would be impossible to deal with the fire before it got to the dynamite. There were enough explosives on the train to destroy the entire town, and Diego was the only person around that could do anything. In a move of incredible bravery, he boarded the train and drove it in reverse down a hill at full speed, hoping to get it far enough out of town so that nobody would get hurt. He drove for six kilometers before the dynamite exploded, which killed him instantly. On that day, young, hardworking Diego Gomez single-handedly saved the lives of the 5,000 people living in Mazunte. What a very inspiring story. But was it true? Driving to your certain death to save the lives of others, could someone really be so selfless? Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and remember to vote by using our on-screen poll. Next up is a fun coincidence that connected both sides of the Atlantic in a very comedic way. It was December of 1937 when Barney Bacco was first seen in American newspapers. The character was a homeless man who had a magical nose that could be used for anything, from a Christmas tree to a bridge. The character, devised by Chuck French, was an instant hit after the first issue, having run for seven years and in over 1,000 newspapers. Unbeknown to Chuck at the time, issue four of The Dandy, a British comic, was also hitting the newsstands on the other side of the Atlantic. Nothing so strange there, right? Well. Issue 4 was introducing a new character, who just happened to be a homeless man also named Barney Baco. Peter Vickers had created a character who not only looked the same as the US version, but had the same talented nose. With the two characters being so similar, it seemed that one of the men must have stolen the idea from the other. But that just wasn't the case. The two cartoonists had never met and Chuck French had never heard of the dandy, as it was still very new at the time. The U.S. Barney Bacco was being published for the very first time, so there was no way that Peter Vickers could have known about it ahead of time. Both cartoonists agreed that no one was at fault, and that it was simply one of the biggest coincidences in entertainment history. In the end, they both had a nice chuckle and continued to draw their own stories for their separate Barneys. 
It's a well-known fact that people in the creative industry borrow ideas from one another. But is it possible that two nearly identical cartoons could come out at the same time without either artist knowing of each other? Cast your vote using the on-screen poll now while we get ready for our third and final story for tonight. This tale of survival against all the odds is gruesome and grisly, but it proves just how much we as humans are capable of doing when our will to live is tested. Sandy Thompson had always been a wild child, so when she ran away from home at the age of 15, nobody was surprised. In 1975 and in Washington, hitchhiking was common. So for the first three days, she had great luck being picked up by kind motorists. Unfortunately, that good fortune was about to run out. On the fourth day, Sandy accepted a lift at a service station in Roseburg, Oregon. The driver was a man in his mid-fifties, and he drove a large gray van. He told her his name was Bernard, and that he was a retired army veteran heading to Salt Lake City. He seemed genuine, and Salt Lake was a place Sandy wanted to check out, so she jumped in the van and off they went. The first hour of the journey was completely normal. Then things got weird, when Bernard took a sharp right turn and headed down a dirt path towards a thick tree line. Confused, Sandy asked Bernard what he was doing, but the man just stared straight ahead. Panicking, Sandy asked him to stop and let her out, but he continued to ignore her. Finally, he pulled over, but before Sandy could react, she was attacked and knocked unconscious. When she woke up, she was alone and lying in some dirt in the wooded area that Bernard had driven them to. Sandy was in terrible pain and terrified that her attacker might still be nearby, but after glancing about, she couldn't see the van. It was only when she sat up that she saw what the depraved Bernard had done He'd severed her left leg just below her knee. Sandy knew immediately that she had to act fast if she was going to live, so she tied her belt tightly around the ravaged leg and started dragging herself in the direction that she thought the road was. It took over an hour to get back to the highway and flag down a passing female motorist. She rushed Sandy straight to the hospital and after a month of recovery, she was well enough to go home to her family back in Washington. Her description of her attacker was ultimately good enough to track the man down. It's no secret that hitchhiking can be dangerous, but why would someone remove half your leg and leave you to die? What did Bernard have to gain from the attack? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below as we get ready for the moment we've all been waiting for. The reveal. Are you ready to find out if you can decipher between fact or fiction? Let's look back at tonight's three stories and find out which were born from reality and which were fabrications of the imagination. Let's first go back to Mexico and the deadly dynamite train that threatened to destroy the small town of Mazunte. Did Diego really act fast enough to save all those innocent lives? And did he really selflessly sacrifice his own? Yes, he did. Though it was Jesus Garcia Corona, and he prevented the unimaginable tragedy when he saved the town of Nakozari in 1907. He was just 25 years old and is still regarded as a hero to the small town today. Next, we're heading back to the world of comics and the crazy coincidence of the transatlantic Barney Bacos. Could such a coincidence like this really occur? It seems impossible that two characters would appear on the same day without any prior knowledge or planning. Although it's certainly strange, it's also certainly true. The only difference is that it was actually Dennis the Menace which appeared in the US and the UK on the same day in March of 1951. Artist Hank Ketchum and David Law maintained they had no knowledge of the other man's work before they made their startling discovery. Finally, we're heading back to Oregon and the scene of the brutal attack of Sandy Thompson. Could a person really be so deranged as to attack a complete stranger in such a brutal way? Well, the answer is no. 
Bernard and Sandy don't exist, and this one was our own little creation. How well did you do in tonight's video? Did you look past the deception of our world and define the off-blurred line that struggles to separate lies from the truth? Let us know in the comment section below. And should you find the urge to test your perceptions again, be sure to subscribe and join us next time when we ask you to decide what's fact or fiction.